A big thanks to designmybeat.com for sponsoring this video. They have a huge selection of sample-based software instruments and drum and beat sample packs inspired by real artists like Martin Garrix, Hardwell, Skrillex, Tiesto, Calvin Harris, and more. Check out Tomorrowland 3, their new 40 gigabyte collection of 10,000 new instruments, drums, and sound effects. This huge contact library is designed to instantly give you the inspiration you need to compose and produce your next big hit. Check out the links in the video description below for more info. Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy. In this video, I'll show you three parallel bus tricks that I often use when mixing drums. I'm going to demonstrate this in Logic Pro 10, but this is really applicable to any DAW. I'm using an acoustic live multi-track drum example here, but this also works for electronic drum kits as well. Let's give this a listen. Okay, so I like the drum tone overall. Um, I'd like it to be a bit punchier and a bit more live sounding. So these are two of the three tricks that I'll show you how to add more punch to the drums overall and also how to uh, make them a bit more live sounding. So I've done everything I can to these to sort of bring out the punch. I've isolated a lot of the drums. I've used strip silence and gating on uh, the kicks and snares and toms to isolate them a bit more. Um, I've also added a drum sample in and layered in uh, a kick sample along with the kick in and kick out tracks. I've also added a snare sample tucked in under the snare top and snare side mics, but it's still not quite as punchy as I'd like it to be. And as you start layering other instruments on top of your drums, this will become really, really apparent. So for all of these tricks, I'm going to be creating a send off of my channels here. So let's go to bus one here. And in Logic, fortunately enough, this automatically creates an auxiliary channel strip or an aux track. And I'm going to make sure that all of these are in stereo as I create them. So I'm going to click the mono button to uh, make it go to stereo here. And then I'm just going to option click on the send amount. And basically, I'm sending 100% of each of the channels into this aux track now. But right now, all that's really doing is just duplicating the signal and making it louder. What I want to do is I want to parallel process the signal on this channel so that it complements the other channels. So the first thing is I want to create an aux channel that adds some more punch. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually EQ the aux track and isolate the frequencies that really give the drums the punch, which is mostly... Uh, the mids and highs. So I'll just add the channel EQ on here. You could also try using the linear phase EQ as well. I'm going to cut a lot of the low end. I'm just going to solo the punch aux track here. Now one thing I like to do is I like to sweep around a band here and find a nice point that resonates in a way that adds to the punch but doesn't make it ring too much. And you can try this with a few different bands. I've added a high uh, boost up here. I could find maybe like a, a more high present boost up here as well. So these resonating pulls are going to add the punch to the drums. I'm going to pull this down just so we're not doing all boosts and no cuts. And then the next thing I'm going to do is isolate just the transient material. So in Logic, under Dynamics, I'll use the Enveloper plugin. And what I can do here is pull the attack up to create more punch and pull the release down to pull out the ring and the sustain in each drum hit.
Now, one thing you may choose to do here is actually pull out the overheads and room mics a bit going to the, the punch track here, just so it's mostly the close mics that are getting that punch. It's got a bit of a high emphasis. Let me add in sort of like a mid frequency boost here as well. And an important thing here is I really don't want this channel to clip, so I'm just gonna make sure that I compensate the output level of the enveloper as well as the volume of the EQ to make sure that the aux track doesn't clip. Okay, so on its own, not that great sounding, but watch what happens when I blend it into the existing drum recording. Now you can try experimenting with different dynamics processing here. I'm using the enveloper and the channel EQ because they're low latency plugins. If you use third party plugins, like you play around with some different gate or expander or compressor gate, whatever you end up using, just be careful that it's a plugin that doesn't cause additional latency because even a few milliseconds of latency can completely destroy the signal because you can get phase cancellation issues between the aux track and the dry signal. So you can pull this up more for songs that are a bit more dense and you're starting to lose the kick and snare and toms, and you can pull it back for softer songs that don't have as dense of a texture. So that's the first trick I do often with drums, just to give them a bit more punch. Now the second trick I'll show you is sort of the opposite. I wanna smash the drums uh, compression-wise on an aux channel to sort of liven up the cymbals and the room tone and then blend that under the rest of the kit. So I'll create another send. I'll use bus two here. Option click to pull them all up. And I'm gonna call this aux track smash. And make sure it's stereo. And then I'll add the compressor plugin. And let's just solo this out. I'm going to dial in a pretty heavy compression setting, but again, remember, we're gonna be blending this with the original drum kit. Okay, so I've got the attack time all the way down. I've gone with the Studio VCA circuit. I like this one the most. And some of the other circuits uh, either don't have an attack time or didn't handle a really low attack time very well. I also pulled in the soft distortion for a bit more bite. Now you might be thinking, why not just take all of the drums, uh, put them in a track stack, add the compressor, add this heavy compression and blend it here. Well, you can actually do that and you'll get a similar result. I like to do it this way because it gives me independent control right in the mixer so that I can quickly make adjustments to the overcompressed, smashed sound versus the dry sound. And what I'll often do is I'll take all of the dry channels, put those in a track stack, and I'll make that a summing stack. I'll just call this drums. And now I have independent dry control, punch control, and smash control. So over compressing a parallel channel on drums 
really works wonders. It almost makes it so that you don't need a reverb channel at all on drums. If you've recorded with room mics and you have those room mics feeding the smash channel as well as the overheads as well as all of the close mics and all these things are feeding that smash channel, it can really help to create an ambience and make the kit seem more live. It didn't sound bad before, it's just when I mute the smash channel, all of a sudden the kit gets a heck of a lot smaller. Now this takes me to my third trick for this video. Let's say that you didn't have enough channels to record uh, even one room mic or a, a pair of room mics. Room mics are incredibly important for drum recordings because they add depth to the recording. So when you use just close mics, that's sort of where the punch comes from. That's your dry, direct signal. And then when you put a pair of stereo overheads, that creates the width. The room mics placed, you know, 10, 15 feet away from the drum kit will create depth for you. So it sort of creates another dimension uh, for, the, for the drums. And when you mute the room mics, it's really, really apparent uh, that they're not there anymore. So let's say you're in a situation where you just couldn't record room mics. Maybe you're tracking drums in a home studio or something like that, or you just didn't have enough channels. Well, you can actually simulate room mics just by sending all of your close mics and your overheads to another aux track. So I'll send this over to bus four. For this, I like to make these pre-fader because that means that any volume adjustments I make on these will not affect the room. If you think about a full drum kit in a room, the volume of the kick, snare, tom, hi-hat, everything in the kit is gonna be full blast in the room no matter where you are in the room. And no matter what you do with your close channels, if you pull down the snare, pull up the snare, that has no effect on the level of the snare in the room. So I like to make these pre-fader just for that reason. So I'll make sure that this is stereo. And what I'm gonna to do to simulate this room is I'm gonna add reverb. But instead of using like an obvious reverb patch in Space Designer, I'm actually gonna use one of these small spaces, one of the small rooms, and I'm gonna pick one of these rooms that has less than a second of decay. I'll try this one called Drum Booth One. And if the aux channel is clipping, you can just pull down the send amounts. So let's try this uh, with all the drums in. I'm gonna mute my simulated room so you can get a feel of what it sounds like with and without. I like that, but I'm not a big fan of this particular room tone. Let's find another one. Yeah, that really helps, kind of like with the smash track, it makes the drums just sound more live and more real and gives it that extra dimension, and it helps to give the drums some depth. And then you could add whatever EQ or compression you wanted on this aux track and treat it just like your room mics. In particular, I have a lot of people sending me mixes to work on, and they're using uh, Logic's drummer plugin, or they're using some other third-party drum instrument that doesn't have room mics built into it. If you've used Drummer and Logic before, you'll know that you can multi-output it to have kick, snare, toms, hi-hat, and percussion, and then cymbals. The cymbal track really isn't even an overhead track. It's just a cymbal track. So you end up with these nice-sounding drum patterns and nice-sounding drum samples, but they just don't sound real because there isn't a room channel. So you can use this to simulate that room channel. So those are three parallel bus tricks that I like to use when mixing drums, adding punch, 
smashing them and over compressing them to make them more live and simulating a room track. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a like and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. You can also check me out on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and if you'd like to support the channel with a monthly donation, you can check me out at patreon.com forward slash music tech help guy. Thanks for the support and thanks for watching.